Today, we're building a woodworking rite of passage, a maraca. Just kidding. Obviously, this is a dead blow mallet. It's a fun day or two project you can build with scrap wood, and you'll find that there's little more satisfying than using tools you built yourself. Here's how I made it. I sandwiched a sapele scrap I got cheap from a local home builder between some leftover maple from my last batch of cutting boards. Trim them down to size on the table saw and crosscut sled. Frankly, 3x7 is too big for a mallet. If I make another one, I'd go with 2.5x5 or somewhere in there. Next, I cut out the cavities for the steel shot to create the dead blow function. The size of these cavities doesn't super matter. I left half an inch around the outside edges and enough room for the handle plus an inch in between them. I cut them out with a 3 8 inch bit at the corners on the drill press and then finished with the jigsaw. These cavities are hidden, so the cuts don't have to be pretty. Glue up next. I glued the cavity board to one of the maples first and let that dry. This way, when I poured the steel shot in, it didn't get stuck in the wood glue. Then I completed the sandwich and let everything dry. The time-consuming part of this project is the mortise and tenon. I marked out the size of the mortise, about a quarter inch smaller than my handle would, so I get a nice lip on the handle for the head to rest on. Use a marking blade, not a pencil, so your chisels have somewhere to rest and reference. Then I drilled out as much of the waste as I could with the drill press and a power drill, and started chiseling, and chiseling, and then chiseling some more. While you're watching me chisel, if you're enjoying this content, then consider dropping a like or even clicking that subscribe button. Every subscriber is one closer to my goal of hitting 500, and I appreciate the support. Once I thought the mortise was finished, spoiler alert, it wasn't, I started on the tenon. This is pretty straightforward. Throw a dado stack on the table saw, or a single blade if you don't have one, and then sneak up on the width of your mortise. I used these new setup blocks I got during Amazon Prime Day, which are vastly superior to using a tape measure. I'll put the link to these and some of the other tools I used in this project in the description. I fit the tip of the handle first, and once I found the right blade height, I cut the rest of the tenon, leaving it about half an inch long. Then, even more chiseling so the tenon actually fit all the way through the mortise. I used a wedged tenon to lock the handle in place, so I drilled two relief holes at the base of the tenon and then cut channels for the wedges. I used a Japanese pull saw because of the thin kerf and to get more practice cutting straight. Well, straight-ish. Now it's handle shaping time. There are pros who are really set up for this with spoke shaves and oscillating belt sanders and probably a bunch of other tools that I don't even know about. I just used a card scraper and an orbital sander until I found a comforter shape. Then I cut some wedges using the Jonathan Katz Moses method, which I'll link to in the description. And then everyone's favorite, sanding. I only went to 120 grit, Mallets are for hitting stuff, so it seems pretty pointless to make any of the surfaces silky smooth. And finally, finally, it's time for assembly. Drive that handle home through the mortise with a bit of glue, and then tap the wedges into place. I cleaned up any glue squeeze out, ignored any gaps or imperfections, and then glued a piece of leather on to soften one face. I may add a piece of cork to the other, but I don't have any at the moment, so I'll do that later. Now 
And there it is, a hammer fit for Thor himself. Though given the wood material, I doubt it will channel lightning, at least not more than once. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, then consider dropping a like and hitting that subscribe button. Thanks for the support.